Hello and welcome to Fly Tie In Sessions with me, Alex Jardine, and today we're going to be looking at the subject of indicator dry flies. Now they're not everyone's cup of tea, but some days when you're nymph fishing, you just need that extra indication of when a fish has taken your flies. A lot of people are fishing a Euro nymph style where your indicator is your line, but still, Personally, I do enjoy going back to days of fishing clink and dink, that New Zealand style or heavier setups. So today we're just going to look at a few flies that I um, I enjoy fishing as indicator dry flies uh, and well worth having in your armory uh, throughout the trout and grayling seasons. Now, fly number one we're going to tie is the ugly ant and that's pretty much what it is. It looks nothing like an ant, but the idea is that it um, is tied on a similar basis to some foam ant patterns. Starting point, we've got the Partridge SLD2. Uh, this is a size 10, so quite a big hook. You want a stronger dry fly hook rather than the usual fine wire style because we need to be uh, tying with foam. We're going to be putting a lot more pressure on, and that's why we're using the Semperfly Nano Silk, uh, but right now we're going to be using it in a sit so That's quite a thick silk. This is usually a, a big fly silk for pipe flies and, and the like, but also really good for tying down bigger pieces of foam. So I'm going to start by laying my thread baits and just getting a nice covering, finishing short of either side of the um, uh, either side of the straight part of the shank. We're not going to tie straight to the bend on here. Simply almost just past the point of the hook and just back from the eye. What I like to do is just put a little crisscross so there's a bit of a groove there for the foam to sit on top. Now this bit helps, it's just taking a bit of super glue because we're going to be tying in a large bit of foam now. So just touching it there, that will help our foam purchase on, on the top. And as we know, those really vi uh, violet colored ants that fly around, this is why it's called the ugly ant, but this is a bit of five mil booby foam, so that cylinder shape, and it's perfect for giving you a, a sandwich effect on this style of, of fly. This is purely an indicator fly. Sometimes the fish will take it, but really what we're looking for is a is a fly that's going to hold up nymphs, usually quite heavy ones, maybe in a fast flow, and this will do that job for you. So to tie this in, we'll place it halfway along and put a turn in here, then another turn. As each turn goes on, they will actually bind that foam down a little bit more. Then I'll pinch this next bit and do an open turn. And again, and we're just going to bind that down. What we're looking to do now, and this is where the thicker thread comes into its own. You see how that's twisting a little bit? That's where when the foam, uh, when the uh, glue cures, it will help hold it in. But also when we fully bind this down with our thicker thread. And one of the reasons for using Sitzo as opposed to the 18.0 nano silk is it doesn't then cut through the foam. Um, obviously, we don't want to find bits of foam flying off in the middle of when we're fishing needs. And we'll give it a really nice thread base. So you'll see that's now much more secure to moving. And it's given us this really nice tying base in the middle 
and then our two sighters either side. Now what we can do, take our super glue again, just a little touch and we're just going to put it on the middle there and let that sink in. We can put a couple of turns on top just to help it all settle in. And now for those times when we don't think foam is going to be buoyant enough, we're now going to add in a grizzle hackle. So from our uh, grizzle cock saddle there, I've selected one earlier. It's actually going to give me quite a small uh, fibre, quite a short fibre. That's because I'm looking at it just to be bulky bulky small and buoyant I don't want really long fibers so the fly sits proud this is purely offering extra buoyancy to the foam because anyone that fishes foam flies will know that quite often they can sit quite low to the water so this will just help pick it up a little bit so I'm going to remove the fibers from the lower part of the hackle just because I don't need those I want to start my hackle at the thinner part of the stem where each turn will become a lot easier tie it in you can place it across the two bits of foam and bind your thread down on top and then to make sure that's not going anywhere you can double that back and then tighten everything down and trim out the tag end that we don't need and then purely to offer us a little bit of a, a base just going to take uh, some Adams Grey super fine dubbing. And this is simply to give our hackle some purchase when we start bringing it forward. So it only has to be a very rough, rough dub coming forward. Fraction more. just to cover that whole area there and when you're using a thread this big turns are more obvious but that's not to worry As remember this is really just a sacrificial dry fly um, for fishing really heavy nymphs so now we're going to start winding this hackle forward so bring it up and we want them quite close together we're looking for good hackle coverage now so we'll be able to get a couple more turns in there maybe once round and then take our thread behind the loose bit try not to let that spin and back on top there cut that in and then take our scissors and we're just going to nip out the tag of the hackle there and this is a bit now that gives us our extra support so we build up a little thread base just in front of the post there also kits everything up so we've got a really good sighter there lots of buoyant materials on we're going to it takes a bit of effort from the fish to pull this down but it's a great indicator 
and you can vary the foam colour for different light conditions. Once and then as I do with all my flies, just put in a second one. Just so you know it's really secure. And then nip your thread out. And there, a very simple indicator fly, the ugly ant. You don't even need to cut the foam back. If you get to the water and you find that that's maybe a bit much, you can start trimming the foam in a little bit. But again, you want it to be as prominent as possible so you see every take on those nymphs going. So that's indicated dry fly number one, the evening the ugly ant. Brilliant. So moving on to fly number two, um, we're going to look at a fly that I first found out about in Iceland but has since become a, a firm indicator fly in my box and that's the fat mattress. So this is another foam based fly and again we're going to tie it on the um, Partridge SLD2, uh, the heavier wire um, hook uh, in a size 10 and we're going to use the Nano Silk again in Sitzo just for its foam handling capabilities. So I begin just back from the eye of the hook and bind that in. Take out the tag and then as with most flies we'll take it to the back of the shank there where we're going to Add in a little bit of just a very light copper wire section just for a rib. So bind that down. There, and then we're going to take a, a brown cock. Hackle, and this is uh, going to offer us a nice palmed hackle along the body. Select this by pairing it up, that's quite nice. Again, quite a short hackle uh, because this is actually going to sit underneath the wing. And then rather than tying in at the base, we're going to tie in at the tip. So to do this, we stroke the fibers backwards to raise them up, just leaving a little spear for the tip, and then tie it with the back of the feather face and the shank of the hook. Trap that in and wind everything forward. And the reason we do this is so as the feather gets thicker as it gets towards the base we get that same um, tapering to thickness going forward in the fly and then we're just going to trim out the remainder of the tip of that feather bind that all down and take our thread back where we're going to Make a dubbing base with just natural CDC fibers. So I do this just by all my CDC offcuts. I then just cut the remainder of the fibers off and save them in a bag for dubbing later. Uh, obviously, CDC has got all its natural buoyancy, um, uh, buoyant attributes so we want we can utilize that in a dubbing in a dry fly so it's a great thing and it's lovely and soft so it dubs really well and we're just going to use that to make a nice 
Nice dubbing base there. And now we're going to bring our hackle forward. So we'll take our hackle pliers, stroke away any excess, and then we want to stroke it backwards. It's always harder starting a hackle from the tip just because you're at the weakest part of the fibre. But once you get it going, it does get easier. So we want nice open turns, just letting those fibres ease out. And this really just gives us A, a bit of bulk through the body, but also that extra buoyancy that we're looking for uh, with an indicated dry fly. And with our final turn, let's take our thread through the hackle. And when tying this way, you'll always track a couple of fibres. It's just a part of part of the core, really. And then we can just snip that out there. You can just tease them out, make them look a bit neater. And then tidy that up. Now with our wire rib, we actually want to go against the hackle. This will trap a few fibres, but if you wiggle it as you go, you will trap less. But the reason we're going against is we want to uh, we want to just protect that hackle from being bitten through if a fish takes it and getting stuck. So then we get to our final turn. Take our thread into it, double it on, and because it's wire, we can just rotate our fingers through and it will break out there. So you'll notice I've left a reasonable space at the front, and this is where we're going to tie in the wing material, which is 2.5 mil foam, and we want quite a broad section, so I'm going to just cut a nice long rectangle, there you go, so you see that, and what we can do is just cut a little V into it, it's quite hard to get get it symmetrical but it just gives you a little area to tie the foam in but before we do that what we'll do is just take our scissors through the hackle directly level with the top of the shank and just take out some of those early fibers it'll stop them being pushed down by the wing and give the wing a place to actually sit. So now like any caddis we want the wing to come past the body usually to the back part of the shank and we want this nice long tongue at the front so hold this down and throw your turns in at the front there and make sure we want to take that all the way to the eye of the hook. There we go. Perfect. And then we add our cider at this part, which is hot orange indicator indicator post. So It doesn't need to be an indicator post, but it does work well. Um, usually because they come in these lovely bright colours. And what we'll do 
is we use the weight of the bobbin to lock that in where we want it, which is on top in between the two wings at the moment. So clamp that down there. And then we're going to take our CDC dubbing again. So this is a great dry fly in its own right, but it does work well as an indicator as well. So we're now just adding that CDC in, and we want one more turn just to take the thread back. And now what we're going to do is fold this big tongue over like that and double it over and then really clamp down here and trap that orange in between the two there and then we can take a touch more of our dubbing just to hide the thread turn that and then I like to just take my thread right to the eye of the hook to finish it off underneath the foam slide that through and second time for luck And we can nip the thread out at this point. And now we just have a little bit of scissor work to finish the fly. So first of all, different pair of scissors. First of all, we'll take this tongue and we'll cut it across. So it gives you that little kicked up wing there. And then I cut the orange bit not quite as long as the overall wing there, just a bit short of that, so it doesn't overshoot it. And then you see how it flares out beautifully, really nice and visible on the water. That hackle's giving you extra buoyancy, but as well as the foam, and then you've got the hot spot orange uh, to give you your sighter in tricky light conditions. So that's the fat mattress. Another thing you can do is shape the back end of it, but to be honest, I find it works quite well, just like that. That's a great indicator and standalone dry fly uh, if you've got a lot of terrestrials around. All right, moving on to fly number three, and I have to say this is probably my favorite of all of my indicator dry flies, the Beast Hammer. So a take on Hans Van Klinken's clink hammer. This just adds a little bit extra to make it extra buoyant, extra visible, and therefore a great indicator dry fly. So the hook, we've got the Partridge K4AY uh, SE, so a straight eye grub to hook. Um, thread, we're staying with the Semperfly Sitzo Nano Silk uh, in black just because again we're tying with foam so it helps to have the nano silk which lays flat so it doesn't cut into the foam but it's also thick enough uh, to help with all those turns. So we're going to begin our thread just back from the eye of the hook and lay a short thread base and just knit the tag of the thread out there and then we're going to take our post material first which is 5 mil booby foam and um, I'm using it in orange but I tie these with white, orange, pink, um, pretty much every colour you can you can get hold of just for different light conditions and rather than tie it in like that 
what I tend to do is there is make a diagonal cut across the foam like that let's do that straight through the middle of it and then that gives you two sections like that it's quite hard to show like that so you've got two of those so you've got two flies per tube and then to tie it in line it up to where you want your post so you want a full part of the body of the foam to sit where you want it to kick up because that's going to kick up like that so what we'll do is we trap it in down at the bottom here take that nice tapered bit all the way down and then we'll begin to take our thread turns up now was a bit tricky I'm probably a bit far forward with that so I'm just going to ease it out and try that in again there so don't worry about it wrapping around the hook too much at this point because as we bind this thin section down that will help stop that from happening so take that forward right. so once we actually get a thread turn on foam you can then start to build the pressure up thereafter it just takes quite a lot of turns just to make sure that you're in control of the foam so it is that into the position that we want and you can take some turns actually around just the foam that will help to anchor it all in place there and now we can take our thread right to the back end of the fly so I like to go to the extremity of the curve and we're going to add in our body material which is super fine dubbing in tan for the body so dub this in nice thin bit to start gradually getting thicker also because of how we've tied in the foam the fly will naturally have a taper going forward so we've done a lot of the hard yards of forming the body already Wind that down nice and tight and begin to wind the body forward. You'll see that getting nice and thick there. And then as you approach where your post is going to be, we change over this time to a super fine dubbing in black. Get a little bit to get us going here. And all we're looking with this is to take us up to the post. And this is creating the thorax of a of an emerging fly. And fish will take this fly um, in their own right. So it's not solely an indicated dry fly. So we taken it up to there and now we've taken our thread in front and now we're going back to our trusty grizzle cape perfect for an all manner of flies I've selected a feather already and if you wrap that around the post you'll see that it comes just past the back and it overshoots the eye which is just what we want for this particular fly I'm going to shed the lower section those fluffy fibers that we don't want in along the thickest part of the stem 
and we're going to tie it in along the shank here. So bind it down. We don't want that slipping, so we can double it back. It gets a bit fiddly with foam, but a turn in, there we go. So that's now not going to go anywhere. Trim that a little bit longer and then trap it down nicely. And then I don't tie it up the posts like many do with a clink hammer. I just have it sat there and allow it to rotate into the foam and, and every turn will naturally want to sit in the same place, that thinnest part of the foam. So personally I don't try and stop it, just go with it and you'll get a nice few turns and then with this last one Let's try and fold the fibres up and let the hackle, weight of the hackle pliers hold it there while you take your thread through and clamp down there. And then you can go in with your scissors, nip it out and you've got your hackle in place. Make sure it's all secure with a couple of extra turns. And then you're finishing the thorax area with some more dubbing. So again in black here, with that super fine. So it dubs really nicely. Let's add it up to the hook. Stroke everything back and out the way, try and get all the fibres, you don't want to trap too many down. And wind back against the hackle and the post, just so you fill in any grooves, that will help push the hackle up as well. And then you can give it a quick look around an extra couple of turns just to neaten it off and then with your whip finish tool take it up to the eye once twice and there you have the boost hammer a really buoyant take on the regular clink hammer perfect for hanging two or three nymphs underneath it if you want in the winter months or fishing really fast runs. Another thing you can do if you want to make it extra point is actually cut the foam that way and have it so it splits open and that can really add some extra buoyancy to it if you need it. So now fly number four um, we're going to tie a high vis caddis. You can't, the caddis being such a big bushy dry fly anyway, it's a great indicator fly. So just by adding a couple of, or oh, a tweak to it, you can make it extra visible. So therefore a great indicator fly. So hook wise, we've got the Partridge SLD2. Uh, this is a size 12. Uh, you can do these in 14s and 10s. Uh, thread, we've got the Semperfly Nano Silk in a 18.0. So, the nice thin thread starting just back from the eye. Get yourself a little thread base going. And then nip out the tag end. And take it all the way to the end of the straight part of the shank and we're going to add in our dubbing. So like many of my caddis, I like the African uh, goat dubbing in uh, Canadian leech brown, so this olivey brown colour. 
uh, by Nature Spirit. Uh, it's a lovely bushy dry fly um, dubbing. And we can just bind that to the thread. It can be tricky to dub with, but it does look great. It gives you a really nice, more bulky, leggy body. So unlike your olives, caddis will have a fairly bulky body all the way along. Um, so you're not looking so much for it to create a taper. Um, you're just looking to create a, a sort of more uniform body all the way along. A little bit extra here. But with caddis, always make sure you've left yourself plenty of room to work with at the front. And we're going to add in our first wing, uh, which is just a CDC wing. Uh, so I'm going to look at pairing three feathers together to create the wing. Uh, and we do that by taking two feathers and placing the tips of them together and lining them up that way and then the third one will do the same with the two before so all the feathers are facing the same direction tips are all matched up and that is all you need to do to create a CDC wing stroke everything back and with a CDC wing you want to try and get it the perfect length straight away so you don't have to cut it. Cutting CDC will make it look quite untidy because by using the feathers natural taper you get a much nicer natural finish to the end whereas if you cut it you get a really bulky solid finish. So that shows up and whip them in. So they've come just past the bend of the hook to give us a nice tent-like wing going on there. Then we're going to take some deer hair, just a nice small cut. This is just for added buoyancy to the CDC part. So once we've got a cut there, we just stroke any fluff uh, that we've cut away. And we take our trusty deer stacker. Uh, we give it a quick tap in the deer stacker. Turn the deer stacker sideways, make sure you do that, otherwise it all goes horribly wrong. Slide out the top and you'll find that the tips have all lined up. And then, and then try and also, when you take them out of the stacker, have them face in the direction that you're going to tie in. Line them up with the end of the CDC wing. Take your thread up and round and put a loose turn in first, then a stronger turn on the eye side of the previous turn, and then lighter turns going back. And the reason we put the strong turn on the eye side is because deer hair is a hollow fibre, so it will splay out. You'll see these are splaying out, whereas we don't want the back part to splay out, so we have lighter thread turns on that side than we do on the other side. So once you're happy that's nice and secure, we're now going to take our trusty hot orange indicator material. Uh, we're simply going to use the weight of the bobbin again to 
drop that in on the top there. Wind that down and then double it back. So, and I've left all of this material, that's key to help you tie the fly off at the end. And now we're just going to take some of our African goat dubbing. Just bind that on there. And this is just to neaten up the thread work now. And you can fold all this back. I mean, you could actually turn that into a caddis head, but that's not what I tend to do. I tend to leave it facing forward. Take your whip finish tool, use all of that material there, hold it back, and allow you to get in and do a really neat whip finish. Once again, neat whip finish. Tap that off. Find where you put your scissors and just knit the thread out. Now we're going to tidy this up by taking all of these loose fibres and cutting it long, so past the eye, so you get that nice bushy caddis head. And we're going to take the bright bit and cut it in shorter than the wing. Up to you how long, say about half the wing length. There's always one strand. And then that's your nice little sighter on your caddis. And there you have a very effective caddis pattern in its own right, but with an added sighter to make it a really great indicator fly as well. Perfect for fishing nymphs on an indicator style. So the final fly of the video, uh, we're going to tie the twinkle gulper. So this isn't really a traditional indicator style dry fly. I find it's a terrific fly when I'm guiding for anyone that struggles to pick up a, a standard dry fly, maybe in difficult light and things like that. And it was because of that that I started to use it more and more. Uh, as an indicator fly for, for light nymphing. So where maybe we're only using one small nymph or we're fishing quite slow water where you're not needing a heavy fly to get down. Uh, so this was perfect for it. And hook wise, slightly different to my traditional style of hook. So we've got the Partridge L3AS, uh, which you would have seen in the last video when we um, tied spiders. Um, so it's a straight, straight eye hook, nice open gape on there as well. Uh, thread we're going to tie with the Semperfly Black Nano Silk. And just start back from the eye. And this is a, um, a parachute style fly. Uh, so I always like to tie the parachute in first. So here we have the TMCO um, Aero Wing in, I think they call it orange, it's like a, it's like a peach almost. And that's great for this particular fly. So work out where we want our wing to go, which is about three quarters of the shank forward, one quarter back. Um, so take your aero wing and drop it in just on top there. So place that down first and then we're going to take a couple of strands of this wonderful Semper Flash by Semper Fly uh, in, they call it Mirror Orange and literally just a couple of strands of it that can be doubled over. 
and this is why this fly works really well in the fading light and we're just going to trap that in the same so once they're all together we can pair them up take our thread round it's a bit fiddly to begin with but just stay with it so you're just taking the thread round the base of those to secure them all together all I'm going to do now I've got them together is just take some of this flash out shorten it down just to help me with my thread turns going up there you, can, you want to go up a reasonable distance then background you and then create a little block either side that will help keep it really nice and secure and then run your thread back to the end of the straight part of the shank and then we're going to take Cote de Leon feather, you can use tailing fibbits as well for this um, I like Cote de Leon as a natural fibre anyway this is quite a pale one in colour without that sort of pardo barring uh, which is good for this particular fly because I want quite a long um, spinner like tail this fly works really well on its own uh, in last light when the fish are honing in on spinner or midges it, tend, it works really well as a crossover pattern for both and I take four fibers if you're tucking it with micro fibbits uh, then you only need two um, but with Cote de Leon I like four and you want to pinch that and just drop the material in bind it down nicely take the thread back and then what you can do to help split these off bring that forward and put one thread turn one thread turn behind them and that can sometimes just help spray them out a little bit and bring it back on front and then now we're going to because we want this to be nice and buoyant we're going to use um, the K-pop dubbing um, from Semperfly this is a really buoyant dubbing it was once used in life jackets so you can quite literally put your life on this on so we want to take um, just a, I use an Adam, so a grey colour, but you can tie these in tans or um, pale olives, depending on your predominant hatch. And get a nice bind. Then with K pockets, it does dub really quite tightly. So you can get a really nice thin, thin body going. Keep that running going forward. The slight taper to the parachute. And to don't need that just yet. So I'm going to take it off and use it again in the thorax. So we don't have a darker thorax on this particular flight. That's 
there. And now for our hackle, we're going to go with a nice light done um, cock hackle. There we go, that's pretty good. So we want the hackle fibres to sort of just extend past the body a little bit, but not too far. We can lose some of the fibres at the bottom, tied in along the shank here. Get a nice cover and really bind it down so it's not going to go anywhere. And then trim the tag out there. Hold the post up. And then we're going to find our hackle pliers. Let's take our thread back a little bit. I'm just going to try and nip that bit of dubbing out. So. Take our hackle pliers on there and just wind our hackle around that thread base that we made before. Oh. And hope that that doesn't happen. If that happens, obviously don't panic. Just you'll have to unwind the whole hackle and just start again. Never try and tighten it if it does that. Try and get one more. So just lift those fibres up there. Drop that in. And then take your thread. Through. And trap those down and then just nip that out and then take our Adam's K-pop from before and bind that to the our thread to finish off this thorax area so you want to wind diagonally back on itself to begin with to make sure we don't have any sort of empty empty dub spots in the thorax area That's it. So, and then you notice know, with parachutes always leave them long until you've actually finished the fly because it will help you hold everything out of the way when you're doing the whip finish or any work around the eye. So I'm going to do our whip finish and a second for good measure. Take our scissors, nip that out and now we can Ease up our hackle, hold our post together, make sure we're not trapping anything, and then cut this. I like to cut mine quite long, so probably the length of the hackle fibers going up. You can always trim it on the river bank if you feel that's too long. Remember this is particularly for an indicator fly and it's amazing how much those little bits of flash stand out particularly in low light conditions. So this is a great more gentle style of indicator pattern but one that's definitely helped a lot in my own guiding and fishing. So one that I think you really benefit from having in your box. So there we have it. Five great indicator dry flies, some that I hope that have given you some inspiration. Uh, please do like and comment on the video and subscribe to the channel for more like it.
and I hope to see you uh, in the next video. Thank you very much.